Good morning and welcome to Food for Thought for Friday, February the 26th, 2021. My name is Pastor Clint Lang with Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC, Canada. Glad you could join me for this morning's devotions. We're continuing to go through the parables of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, this morning, we're going to be focusing on the parable of the budding trees. So, the parable is found in different books in the New Testament. Uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And today we're going to be looking at Luke chapter 21, verses 29 to 35. So, we read, He told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and all of the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you this, this generation will certainly not pass away until all of these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Be careful, or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life, and that day will close on you suddenly like a trap. For it will come on all of those who live on the face of the earth. So here we look at uh, the parable of the budding trees. Many people say, well, is this not a parable about the budding fig tree? That's what it's referred to sometimes. Well, yes, it is. But it is not just the fig tree, if you notice in the first part of what we read, but all the other trees as well. Is that an important distinction? I believe that it is. Because when we look at the scriptures in context, um, it is referring to two different generations uh, in this prophecy unfolding. You see, Israel at times is compared to a fig tree. And if the fig tree represents Israel, then the other tree, uh, the other trees that are talked about represent the other nations of the world or the Gentiles, the believers in Christ that are Gentiles. So Jesus is asking his hearers to look at the nations, including Israel, for signs of the times. He encourages us to look at what he said in the verses prior. So when we consider the time, signs of the times, uh, Jesus said, when we see these things happening, well, these things, these things that he's talking about need to be uh, qualified. In Luke chapter 21, there are two prophetic events that Jesus Christ speaks to his disciples about. The first one is the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem, which ended the worship in the temple in Israel in AD 70 and that temple was destroyed and laid flat by the Romans. They took every stone that was upon the other stone and threw them down and Jesus refers to the destruction of the temple in Luke chapter uh, 21 verse 6 when he was standing in the temple courts with his disciples and he said this, as for what you see here, the time will come when not one stone will be left on to another. Every one of them will be thrown down. And they were all looking at the temple at the time. And Jesus clarifies, don't get your hopes up. This temple is beautiful, but there's going to come a time when this is going to be destroyed. So the disciples that were listening to him speak would be the generation that saw this happen and all the signs that occurred in their generation. See, if you read Luke 21, 7 to 24, there's many signs that precede the destruction of the temple. Well, we see in Luke 21, 24, that Jesus, Jesus predicts that there would be many signs given to his disciples and that the destruction of Jerusalem would, uh, would soon be taking place after the fall. In, and that happened in AD 70. The nation of Israel was to be scattered and taken as prisoners to the various nations that are out there. And Jesus said that Jerusalem would be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles was completed. So many signs that the seasons are changing and getting nearer to the second coming of Jesus will take place as well. Now, some have said this. See, so we have Jesus talking about the temple and the destruction of the temple, and then we have him talking about um, Jerusalem being trampled by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles is completed. So, what are the signs? 
Uh, some have said that Jesus Christ is referring to the establishment of the nation of Israel, uh, that this generation will not pass until all these things have been fulfilled. Well, you know, in 1948, Israel became a nation. And that's a very interesting sign, but that's not the sign that's being talked about in this particular passage of Scripture. I want to make something absolutely clear here. That um, is a sign because it's showing that the coming of the Lord is near and that the end of the time of the Gentiles is close. But it's not saying that that generation that saw that uh, will actually see um, the second coming of Christ. In fact, um, that's not one of the signs that Jesus is talking about here in Luke 21. Israel, I just want to make sure that you understand, I'm not saying that Israel becoming a nation isn't a sign, but it's not this particular sign where the, the generation that sees the nation of Israel coming to, to be sees the second coming of Christ. Okay, That's not what it's talking about here. Um, you know, things like like the nation of Israel coming together or the latest uh, endorsement by the United States that Jerusalem would be the capital of Israel. That's significant and it shows kind of the seasons changing, like the budding on the fig tree. It shows it, but it is not part of this particular prophecy mentioned here by Jesus. Jesus said the sign for the second coming of Jesus would be the nations in anguish about the roaring and tossing of the sea. There will be terror and apprehension for what is coming in the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. These are the signs that will occur right before the second coming of Jesus in a cloud with great power and glory. Jesus says when believers see this occurring, that they are to lift up their heads for their redemption is drawing near. So in this parable, Christ provides the perspective that we should all have as we anticipate the unfolding of the prophecy um, of the previously of these two previously discussed events by Christ, one, the the destruction of the temple and the scattering of the Jews into the world and the trampling of Jerusalem by the Gentiles, and then the time of the Gentiles being fulfilled uh, and the coming the second coming of Christ. So two events. So we've got to make sure that when we read into these scriptures, that we read into the context of each event separately, right? So, um, I guess I, I wanted to say, you know, like what owner of a fig tree or any other kind of fruit tree, um, this is an important thought too, would spend hours each day scrutinizing the tree to see if it was budding? Um, would he make the trees that are going to bear fruit, the singular focal point for his day? Uh, of course they wouldn't. No one would do that. An owner of a fruit tree would be aware of its location, its level of health, would you know would feed it or water it when necessary, and its progression. You'd look at the progression and the annual cycle of growth, but these matters would not uh, require all-consuming effort. So the parable, if you see at the end, of what I read there shows us that uh, we should be aware of these prophecies and we should we should know what's happening by the seasons and keep an eye on what's happening but it doesn't require that we we should allow it to become our primary focus in the fig tree analogy Jesus illustrates for us the balanced view that we should have towards prophecy we must be aware of what is taking place but not overly consumed with it to the point that it excludes everything else. Some make the mistake, a spiritually dangerous mistake, I, I should say, of ignoring the lesson of this parable by making prophecy uh, the sole focus or the major focus that distracts them from their primary spiritual responsibilities in the here and now. See, it's easier to focus on prophecy and world events than it is to give the same level of focus to ensuring that we're living on obedience to the Lord and doing what God wants for us here and now. Uh, Christ definitely does not overlook the latter because you see, after the parable of the, uh, the budding trees in verses 34 and 35, 
Jesus says this, Be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life. And that day will close in on you suddenly like a trap, for it will come to all those who live on the face of the whole earth. So he's now referring to the signs that he said, the, the signs leading up to the destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70, and the signs leading up to the second coming of Christ. We should take these two examples and look at them and be careful that our hearts aren't weighed down. Those things should make us remember that God is going to bring all the wickedness of this world and everything to culmination um, in His time. And we're not sure exactly when the Lord's going to come. I mean, we don't know exactly when those time, times are going to be brought to fruition. But we ought to be careful and that our hearts don't get weighed down with uh, the things of this world in the meantime. So we should be vigilant. We should be aware that history is going to wrap up in this way in light of everything that happened and also the future signs that will accompany the second coming of Christ and, and, and ask ourselves, what kind of people, since all these things are ha going to happen, what kind of people does God want us to be right here and right now? Um, well, Second Peter 3.11 agrees with what Jesus says here at the end of this parable. And, and 2 Peter 3.11 says, 10 and 11 says this, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and all of its works be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? Jesus says that we ought to be careful that our hearts are not weighed down with all this stuff, right? All this wickedness of life and worries of life. Um, the end will surprise some people like a trap springing shut because they're not focused on what counts and are looking in the wrong direction. Well, rather than overcoming the world, they are being absorbed by it. So God wants us not to be absorbed by the things of this world, and he doesn't want us to be just, you know, singularly focused on prophecy. He wants us to be looking at our lives and how we should serve our Lord in practical ways in everyday living as well. And the prophecy should be at the back of our mind, knowing that when they come, and, and see how it says before the second coming of Christ, you know, when you see these things happen, well, I don't know what that's referring to. On the second coming, it could be some cataclysmic event. Obviously, the heavens are being shaken. Uh, people are running in terror. And when all this stuff happens, we're supposed to lift our heads for our redemption draws nigh because Christ is going to come down a second time, right? He's going to uh, come back a second time. So um, we need to be aware that that happens. That's going to happen. And when it does, if we're around in the future, <laughs> when that does happen, okay, this generation, that generation that sees those events, the earth being shaken and everything like that happening in the last part of, of the parable, we see the summer approaching and then we see the signs. And that generation, when they see those signs, they should lift their head up for their redemption draws nigh. This is something to think about. This is food for thought.